Glad that you're clapping your hands, but after you knew what I have to say, you will clap your hands even louder, and harder, and stronger, because uh, uh, I will put it in a, in, a, in a very simple way. Mar Marty is the visionary and the architect of this seminar. Okay, it was Marty's um, idea when uh, we met um, a year and a half ago, I think it was. Um, Marty represents the Glazer Foundation. You probably all realize that this is called <coughs> It's called the Glazer Seminar, right? Yes. So you probably wonder, wonder why it's called the Glazer BGU Israel Study Seminar. So BGU, you know why it's called. Mm -hmm. And the Glazer is uh, because the Glazer Foundation, um, uh, which dedicates significant part of its work to the strengthening of the ties between Israel and China. Is that correct? Correct. Yefe. So uh, the Glazer Foundation, through Marty actually were the ones who came with this idea. Marty thought, how, to, how can we provide a better understanding of Israel to Chinese students that reside in Israel? Um, they come, they study uh, the Weizmann Institute, the Technion, uh, Hebrew U. Uh, you focus on your studies, you want to succeed, you want to learn well. But how can we give you the sense of connection to other things that are happening around you? How can we get you a better, how, how, will, you, how will you experience your stay in Israel in a more significant and deep way? Um, and Marty uh, came to us and said, will you be willing to host a one-week seminar for Chinese students from all over the country in which you will represent different dimensions of Israel academically and also through encounters with Israelis. And we couldn't resist, because Marty was very persuading. And we said yes. And uh, so thanks to that idea and initiative, uh, we're all here to today in this first cohort of the Glazer BGU Israel Study Seminar for Chinese students. And as I told you in our first meeting, <coughs> I think it's going to be, it's definitely the first cohort, but it seems that we'll have Hopefully, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, you will have more reports, um, and you will all be able to say that you were here in the first report and you met <laughs> <laughs> the founding father of this thing. So thank you, Marty. Really, my thank pleasure. So I hope everybody's having a good time. It seems like you are. Good. Okay, and now Arya will represent our speaker. Our speaker for now. All right. Um, Ben Herzog, I'm lucky to have Ben Herzog to talk to us about why doesn't they don't have a constitution. Um, after this afternoon, we're going to continue with Israel and startup nation, and then Israeli music and Israeli culture. And the next three sessions really have a common theme. Uh, and so let me uh, tell you really quick what the common theme is, uh, and so hopefully this will be um, the aim is to facilitate your understanding. So this will be sufficiently simple. Um, that you'll have uh, you'll be able to understand Israel better. So, uh, as we've been discussing these past few days, Israel is a dynamic society. There are these various sectors of Israeli society, notions of Israeli identity, um, and uh, these. There's a common foundation. Uh, uh, Jewish Israelis relate back to the same ancient history to a large percent, uh, uh, extent. Uh, participate. In the same uh, uh, practice. For instance, 99% of the Israelis put the mezuzot on the doors we learned about, and 90% will be participating in a Passover Seder, and 70% fast on Yom Kippur. So you have the relationship to, to ancient history and a certain degree of, of practice in common. That said, Israel is a very diverse society, as you can see, it's, uh, with different cultures and different identities, and they come into contact with each other. And that contact, uh, there's arguments and there's work through ideas, that, that society, that diverse society, creates a lot of energy and dynamism. <coughs> so, politically, how do we deal with that dynamic? Politically, that's what Ben is going to talk about. From that same dynamic, which is almost a kind of uh, continual brainstorming session, in part, the startup nation emerges. And that same dynamic, that same energy, is the essence of Israeli culture. And then what this afternoon, through Israeli music, 
I'm going to hopefully provide you with a key to understanding this dynamic society, this dynamism uh, of Israeli culture. So the next three sessions, why doesn't Israel have a constitution, startup nation, and uh, Israel using Israeli identity, they're all dealing with the same common thing. Okay? So without any further delay. Hi, good morning. I'm uh, Ben Hernkov, I'm a faculty here at the Engineering Institute. And what I'm talk, going to talk about today, uh, the title of the title, Why Doesn't Israel Have a Constitution? But it's not going to be just about a legal debate on Constitution, on what does it mean, and what, but more about Israel, about Israel's society. Uh, what does it what can you learn from this debate, which happened in the 1960s and maybe continues until today, what can we learn from this debate about the Israeli political culture? And when I mean political culture, and this is from, I think, social science, Wikipedia is not very important to the exact terminology, but the idea is that we as people, we as society, we have attitudes, beliefs, uh, sentiments, all kinds of uh, personal feelings and uh, relationships that affect how we deal with, with each other, how we work together as a community. And we will see, and we, what you talked before, that Israel is composed of uh, many different groups and with different ideologies, the different um, belief systems, different uh, attitudes. So how do they work together? As how Israel politically, how the political system works. And this is what we'll try to get at. Um, another point in political culture is that it's, it's a product of both personal and collective histories. So both what we, we tend to uh, a political system uh, follows what historically happened to the society, whether it's uh, immigra immigration waves, <coughs> we talked before about wars, about different public events, but also about from personal histories. So each one of us brings something from his own personal history, and this together they shape what's called political culture and how we work together. Now, why you ask me to think something personal, a story, and I don't have really a personal story about Constitution, which is a big thing, but I have something to personally be about to give you an example. What is political culture? So, after I finished my uh, army, my military service, I worked in a factory in South Tel Aviv. And without getting into too, too much detail, but my political views were different from the uh, most of the other uh, workers in this uh, factory. And uh, we had this, uh, we have, among many, we have some um, political discussion. And, and at one point, the, the manager, which also didn't agree with anything I said, probably. <coughs> he said, well, you have to listen to him because he served in a special unit in the military. And this is an example of how with our attitudes or belief system, yeah, we believe that, that, for example, serving in the military is an important thing. And therefore, my political views should be heard. Not because legally the legal book says so, but because culturally uh, Israel gives important sentiments, beliefs, attitudes uh, goes uh, along with this uh, military service. So throughout the, the talk today, I'll try to make this relationship between uh, what we are and how we um, <coughs> work together. So, first I want to just talk about what is the Constitution? What is this document uh, that most countries around the world have? 
regardless of their uh, political system, you, most countries have a constitution. And I wanted to hear if you know, if you don't know, I will of course tell you so what is a constitution. Anyone know? Okay, what? Yeah, the law. And first, it's the legal document. It's uh, an important legal document. Uh, and it tells several things. First, it decides, there is uh, most constitutions, write down what is the uh, procedure, what is the uh, basic uh, political procedure. Uh, how many parliament members, who is going to be the president, when is there is elections, where is the capital, whether it's in uh, Jerusalem or in Tel Aviv, where, for example, in Israel. Uh, it says the, how society, political system works. So this is one of the main things the uh, Constitution has. Another element, it also t t usually, the Constitution tells you not just how the system works, but what is expected from the citizen? What are the obligations of the citizens? And what are the rights? What they are allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do within the political system. Another important aspect is the fact that usually, and there are different, uh, because there are different kinds of laws, this law is to, supposed to be stronger, uh, most foundational law. It's not something that can be changed every election, but something which is uh, supposed to be more stronger than other laws. We'll talk about that later. Um, but the idea is that it's not something that can change every every peer, every other, every every um, change in the government, or if there is a new prime minister or president, president, it doesn't mean that the constitution change, but it, it should be something stronger, although it can change. <coughs> and the last thing, and I think this for me is the most not the most important, but one of the most important factors. And it's connected to the idea of culture. About uh, is that usually this document signifies what the country wants. What are the desires? What are the needs? What are the main values of society? So again, just to summarize it. So it's a legal document. Uh, most countries have it says what is the political procedure? What are the rights and obligations? Uh, it's stronger than other laws, and it represents the most foundational value of society. And as I said before, most countries around the world have such documents. And when Israel was established, uh, people believed that as a modern society, it should, Israel should also have a constitution like any other country. And actually, and I will take this uh, uh, declaration of the president, or it's called uh, declaration of the establishment of the state of Israel. So there are a lot of like normative issues. So for so that, it's the natural right of the Jewish people to master their own states, like all other nations in their sovereign states. Here, this, and, and but then there is also another part of the uh, declaration. It might seem technical, but it's still in the official declaration. <coughs> that states that the first, one of the first uh, laws, or one of his first things the elected uh, government will do is to uh, adopt a constitution. And actually, it has a date until the 1st of October 1948. It's, 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 it's part of the declaration is the fact that we should have a constitution. So at that time, like most other countries, Israel wanted to have a constitution. This document 
strong document that tells about the values of Israel. But it, it decided not to have. It decided in the 1950s, uh, after the establishment of the state, not to have a constitution. And until today, there is no constitution in Israel. And as if this is the puzzle we'll talk about today. So why Israel doesn't have a constitution? And my answer, and I will tell you now briefly, but then I'll expand it in the talk, is connected to the culture, the political culture of Israel. Israel decided not to have a constitution, not necessarily because it's a bad thing or a good thing, but because it didn't fit the political culture of uh, the Israeli society. Okay. So the first thing I want to uh, the first difficulty Israel had when it decided not to to um, establish a constitution was technical. The fact that they promised in the founding document of Israel they promised to write a constitution. In fact, if you also look at how uh, politicians spoke at that time, whether it's Ben Gurion, the founding father, but from all parties from said that we want a constitution. They promised in the election, we want a constitution. And but <coughs> and then there was no constitution. So how do we deal with the, those promises? Um, so again, first promise that uh, it is was in this document. And uh, how did they solve that? Well, first they solved that because they said that um, this is, a, of course, a very foundational document. And as Ari, uh, as he told you in the last uh, talk, it is actually uh, culturally very much influencing our decisions political decision, legal decision <coughs> in the state of Israel, but from a, just a legal uh, point of view, a purely legal point of view, it's not binding. That this document is not, um, does not have the legal authority uh, to mandate what's going on. So one cannot say to the court, it's written here, something and therefore the state has to do it because this is like a document that a symbolic document that it is but it's not binding the, the legal system does not um, can use it but it doesn't have to use it so this is why at first have they, they overcame this technical obstacle of uh, not writing a constitution it actually also said that a bit of, uh, I don't know if it's too small for you to read, but I'll tell you what it said. That actually some people said, well, the whole point of having a government or elections or is the fact that the politicians, the elected politicians, could choose what's going on, what, what will happen. And not, uh, and this declaration, and so they, they should uh, decide rather than the documents, those documents that predated uh, their election. Um, so actually, he said, well, if we follow, we follow this uh, document, this uh, declaration, in precisely, we actually devalue the power and the authority of the Knesset member. The Knesset is the Israeli parliament. Another promise was not to Israelis, was to the world. Um, I don't know if you talked about the UN partition plan. Did they mention? They didn't. Briefly. Briefly. So what before the state of Israel uh, was established, the UN decided on a partition 
in Israel between Arabs <laughs> and Jews. So there will be a place between you know, an Arab country and a Jewish country. And the Israelis agreed to this partition, but the Arabs did not. And follows that with what the independence war and uh, so in a sense, but but on the other hand, it said that this agreement in this UN plan that if the, the Jewish state will have a constitution. So again, and Israel agreed to this plan. So again, there is another point, and Israel agreed to something. How do they uh, do something different? Well, they said at that point, well, the partition plan was good, which was in 1947. It was good before the war. If everybody agreed to the partition, partition plan, we would follow that. But since the Arabs did not um, agree to the partition plan, the state of Israel was, uh, was established because of the independence war, not because of the, the, the partition plan. So we don't have to follow this uh, UN uh, decision. Again, I don't want to go to, to be too technical because my point here is to talk about Israel society. I want to, to briefly mention that there are technical legal issues here. Do I ask a question? Yes, sure. Uh, because just now you mentioned uh, the petition plan. Can you um, like, explain a little bit about like which part and which part was actually allotted to um, Palestinian and which part goes to Israel? Like originally, you know, when the UN actually initiated this petition plan. Well, um, but the partition plan, again, I'm not an expert or geography, and geography or the, the different plans. There were many plans before uh, the establishment of Israel. But I will say certain, several remarks. Uh, first, I think the partition plan more or less followed the demographics. In areas that there were more mostly Jews, it would be part of the Jewish land, and areas which are Ar uh, mostly Arab would be part of Arab states. For example, the, the Galilee, the north of the country, which is, was at that time mostly populated by Arabs, was um, supposed to be part of the Arab um, <coughs> land, but or, or the West Bank uh, was part of, uh, of the Arab uh, country, Gaza Street was part of the Arab, uh, should have been part of the Arab uh, country. But on the other end, uh, central of Israel, Jerusalem, well, Jerusalem is a bit more complicated. Jerusalem, yeah, Jerusalem. Yeah, 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 you're, 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 it's a hard question, yeah. What? I mean, Jerusalem, I remember Jerusalem is like uh, regarded as an international city. Which yeah, is it's a partition like, plan. Uh, Jerusalem, the area, partition, the area of Jerusalem which would, be, which would have been international. Uh, city which no, not, not the Israelis or the Arab state would have uh, authority over. Um, do you have anything to add? Or? First of all, well, um, there are people here who can help you out and uh, know about it in, in depth. Maybe we can connect you with them. And uh, also, if you just want to see a picture of it, if you go on Google and put partition by 1948, you can see the map. Yeah. Um, the, but anyway, it, the, the, the partition plan was accepted by Israel. It was not accepted by the Arab world, which directly afterwards attacked uh, Israel, or the state of Israel. And the, the boundary of the new state where uh, in effect, consequence of the war, and not because of the partition plan. <laughs> um, yes? I, I get confused. Sure. How does all of those things related to Israel not having a constitution? Right. Uh, <laughs> no, well, it, it's not directly. This is just mentioned technical things. Okay. That in the partition plan, Israel, or not Israel, it was said that Israel will have a constitution, will write a constitution. And Israel agreed to that. 
So in a way, it agreed to a document that says that we are going to have a, a constitution. This is more a bureaucratical thing, why, how it's connected. Okay, I'll, I'll continue again. I want to move to the more interesting part, at least for me. Uh, so, why do, first we'll talk about general issues, or why politicians at that time did not want to have a constitution. So first it said, well, Israel wants to be, the politicians said, Israel wanted to be a democracy. But there is not a, a clear line between democracy and constitution. So there are many countries uh, that uh, were not uh, democratic, but did have constitution. The most I think, uh, the example that usually is given is the Weimar uh, constitution. Germany uh, had, before the Second World War, had the constitution, the democratic constitution, but this did not stop Hitler from coming to power. This did, did not uh, stop um, a, a, a totalitarian regime, the Nazism. So it, it didn't protect the Jews, it didn't protect... So this uh, constitution, yes, it was a binding, uh, important uh, document, but it didn't uh, mean a lot. On the other hand, that there are countries like Britain, like the UK, who do not have a constitution, but still are, have no, uh, are considered modern, considered democratic. So there isn't a link. Uh, some, uh, so some politicians, even at that time, said, well, this is, an, I call it an empty declaration, or a meaningless declaration. It's just words. It's not, uh, uh, being in fancy words, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything uh, later. Um, but, but to make it more, impo more importantly, it says, as I have told you, that in fact, non-Jews in Israel, or all minorities, especially non-Jews, already had or what was decided to give the, the full citizenship rights. So, the, in fact, in reality, there was already the, um, on the ground the equality that the constitution was supposed to give. So, the politicians said, why should we have a constitution if it's already we already have this equality. It's not, uh, if the if, uh, reason for constitution is to uh, guarantee equality, so we don't need a con uh, constitution because we already have equality. Okay. Um, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Um, could you please tell us about the uh, what citizenship rights uh, did, did you have at that time? You mean, uh, in Israel. Yeah, you mean minorities in Israel had already uh, equal uh, citizen rights? And uh, could you please like uh, um, tell us like uh, uh, what which kind of citizenship rights do you have? Okay. Okay. Um, First, we are talking here about those people who are citizens. Where, uh, and actually it was determined only in 1952, but it's not, again, a technical matter. But, the, the, I think the mo there are certain several kinds of, we can talk a lot about what kind of right, like political rights to vote and to be elected, Social rights about what kind of uh, you know, healthcare insurance protection, equal protection from the law, um, civil rights, I know, freedom of movement. What's important? There are many. There is a big list. But uh, but the most important thing is that they were equal to all groups. It didn't matter. Your background did not matter. 
at least from a legal perspective, did not matter. If you were a citizen, you got the same rights. Yes? I disagree. At least you have to give the definition of the citizen in the Constitution. Otherwise, everything follows up and it doesn't make sense, right? Well, we'll talk about that if it had to be in the Constitution. But there were laws. It's not that it's, 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 it wasn't that, that Constitution, yes, but there were laws in Israel that said that uh, uh, those rights are equal. So it's not just a, a social thing that people believed uh, that the rights should be equal, but actually legally they were equal. Yeah. Wait, and the equal citizenship, citizen rights, <coughs> you mean the Arab? In Israel, uh, in territory of Israel at the time, have had this, uh, the equal rights with the Israel or Jewish citizens. Mm -hmm. Well, again, uh, it gets always in Israel it gets more complicated. But uh, but Arab citizens in this, of course, we're talking in the state of Israel had uh, equal rights. Twenty percent back then, but until today, more or less, it shifts a bit. 20% of the population are arms. They have full, equal, full and equal rights. Okay, again, it, it is, I said it's, it's more, a bit more complicated because there were uh, certain reasons to argue that they do not always have equal rights. If uh, until 1966, for example, uh, the Arabs in Israel were under military rule. And under military rule, they do not really have the same rights as, uh, as Jews. But it was lifted. The, again, uh, so, so there is a debate between scholars. Some would say, yes, of course, it was always equal, but there were some unequal moments. And some scholars would say, would be critical and say, no, the intention was for them not to be equal from the first place. But in reality, if you look at other countries around the world, how they treat minorities, they had, arms in Israel had, uh, more, they were more or less equal. So they had much more uh, rights, even political rights. So even from the first day, from the first elections, they could vote. Um, yeah, so just, uh, that's not, to keep it simple, perhaps we can just say a non-Jew, a non-Jewish non citizen in Israel today possesses equal rights. And yeah, so I will. Meaning, the basic meaning, non-Jews in Israel today possess the right to vote. They can, they can freely express themselves as a free press. They can freely organize. They can freely associate the freedom of religion. They can worship in a mosque. They can Church, they uh, have uh, they teach their language in the school, school system. They was Arab to teach Arab children in Arabic. They learn Islamic studies, etc., mm -hmm. uh, etc. Et so yeah, I mean, and, and if, if someone sees it as a process of not just a fixed thing, yes, the process is for more and more equality. Um, I hope it's answered the question. Um, so there were other reasons. And again, I, I, maybe I did a lecture in the wrong order because I left what important to the end, but I should maybe start started with that. But OK, but uh, here I'm, I'm going to talk about the other technical. It's not necessarily a technical issue. Many politicians that at that time said, well, yes, we want the Constitution, but we're not ready for a Constitution. We're not ready for this founding document. And one of the reasons was that at that time, only 35% of the Jews around the world lived in Israel. Even today, I think it's around the half, around the half uh, of the Jews around the world live in Israel. The other half live elsewhere. So they said, well, if we are a Jewish state, how can we decide for all the Jews around the world if only a minority of them, only 35%, live in Israel? 
at that time. So they said, well, now it's too early in the game, in a sense, to write the constitution. We'll wait until everybody, all the Jews will come to Israel, and then we'll decide on a constitution. And by your uh, laughter, <laughs> I think uh, this is actually some other said, well, it will never happen. <laughs> the, 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 uh, the, the, or at least uh, uh, the, the belief was that some Jews, especially from affluent countries, the United States, from Europe, they will stay in, in those countries. They will, not, will never come to Israel because they are better off in the United States or other countries. So maybe this is not this is just a, a nice way to say no. We don't want a constitution to give a, a, an excuse that will never be fulfilled. Uh, other reasons were well, we're too we're it's a young country. We don't have traditions and to decide what, we don't have political experience to decide how to write a constitution, so maybe we should wait until a time will be more, uh, we'll have more experience politically. And the main issue, this is a, a bit start to be connected to what I said about political culture, that it's connected to both personal experience and collective experience. At that time, there were more pressing issues. From a, uh, the history is at that time, they dealt with uh, war, with the Arab world. There were um, massive waves of immigration, which you talked about. The, the, the uh, number of immigrants who came were, uh, I think, twice the number of the Jews who already lived in Israel. So they had a very uh, heavy burden. The economy was I were weak, but again, well, definitely not strong, and ne definitely not the startup start nation we'll talk about uh, today, tonight. And so they had, they had really uh, more crucial and uh, life threatening issues than this uh, legal procedure. But, and here I come to the my main point. <laughs> but the main reasons for not having a constitution is connected, connected to the cultural reason. So what was unique about the Israel society that said, well, this document is not so important. Actually, it's better that we don't have such a document. And so the first uh, term I would like to offer you is called voluntary compromises. <laughs> And what are those voluntary compromises? As you heard before, Israel society was uh, composed of very various groups, even among Jews, that came from different countries, different languages, different habits. To that, we can different uh, attitudes toward religious religion. Some were more religious, some were less religious. They had different political views. So, yes, there was some consensus of the fact that Israel, there should be an Israeli state, but it wasn't really not clear what kind of state it should be. And of course, to that you can add other, as regular, other divisions that happen in society, in all society, between uh, geography, people who live in the cities and people who live in the periphery, from the rich and the poor, from the educated, less educated, so there were many divisions in, 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 uh, um, in society. So the problem was, even before the state was established, how do we work together? How do we uh, make sure that all those groups, diverse groups, with different ideology, with different backgrounds, sometimes different languages even, how do they work together? And the idea, and one of the cultural beliefs, was if we make compromises, voluntary compromises, we'll make sure that everybody will be, in a way, happy. So we'll make all kinds of deals, let's call it in a, maybe, uh, in a political way, that make sure that everybody 
continue to play uh, as part of the general political uh, system. Um, and one of those compromises was not to write a constitution. If you write a constitution that binds us, that tells us exactly what are our values, what are the, the, the rules, what are the way we should uh, work, some groups, some parts of the Israel society who say we are not really happy with that. We don't want to play in the game. We don't want to be part of this emerging society. So the idea was to not to write something that can offend other group or different groups. So in a way, this is a compromise that uh, in order for the diversity of um, the present individual society to be uh, articulated or presented. Um, there, I wrote the same thing in other words. There were too many social and cultural divisions in the Israel society, and it was impossible to compose a single and uni unitary rule. So, how can we decide on a a single document that represents everybody is probably impossible, but more than the, the fact that it's impossible, maybe it's not necessary. Maybe it's better for us not to have such uh, a document. Um, later on, if, if there is time, I would also add there were many other such uh, compromises within the Israeli society that um, between the different groups, if it's about um, the mil who go to the military, what kind of education system there will be, what are the uh, relationship between religious and non-religious religious Jews. There were there many compromises in order to uh, uh, uphold this unity. The other cultural reason is, I would call it, deciding not to decide. And this is um, the idea that we did not write a constitution, not because techni from technical reasons we couldn't or political reasons we couldn't, but because we didn't want to write this constitution. The idea was that let's see if there is something controversial, something that might uh, create more divisions in society, maybe we should delay it. Maybe we should not uh, deal with it at all. So the idea was uh, because the constitution might be a basis for con contestation, partition, uh, we should delay, we should not create one. Um, The idea was not to have some single uh, document that other groups, for, as I said before, for other groups uh, would, would be hard to join the same uh, document or the same value, shared value. And again, I'm not sure how much I'll continue uh, time, but we can see that both of this those uh, cultural reasons or, or cultural political culture continues until today. Until today, we see the political system, uh, the idea that maybe we should delay decisions. Maybe we should form a committee, or maybe we should uh, uh, have uh, uh, an extension, a two years extension, or or maybe we should. We should delay critical decisions that might split society. It's better not to decide rather than decide something that would cause uh, partition. But also what I said about compromises, there are always uh, constant political compromises between the political party, between the political group, between the groups. 
in order to keep uh, the system uh, united. Um, of course, uh, after the establishment of the state, it was a bit different, it wasn't, it wasn't always the compromises were not always voluntarily, because there was a military, there was a police, there was the law, legal system that could force people uh, to uh, stay united, that could force someone who doesn't want to go to the military to, uh, to go to the military, for example. But this compromises still continue. The whole political system in Israel is about compromise. Um, okay, I'll give you an example for that. And uh, the, the political system in Israel is not uh, presidential. In, uh, in the United States, for example, there is an election. The winning party chooses the president, and then uh, it doesn't have, the, those who didn't win do not have any influence on the politics. But in Israel, the idea is not to have such di di divisive uh, measures, but to have a parliamentary system in which each group can uh, represent, have a party, can represent itself politically, and in the end, in order to form, and this is what happens uh, you know, now, the, in order to be a prime minister, you need to have a coalition. You need to work together with different groups to find a consensus. And rather than uh, a, a political system that will divide the country. Now, what time? Okay. Now there are other reasons. Those are political reasons, and. Again, there is some debate among scholars how much of those political reasons are important. Um, some would say no. The, the, uh, there are many, especially from political science, that would say no. This, those are the real reasons. What, what uh, decides whether we adopt the law or not is not about values or culture or about identity. It's more about who has power, who has the uh, ability to control things. So from this perspective, there were, even in the 50s, people said, well, the Constitution is bad because it binds the government. It's a document that tells what are the limits of your authority. What can you do, what can you not do, what you must do. And all political parties, a power, president, prime minister, all those in power, don't really want that. They want to have more ability to, to do whatever they want. And actually, a constitution might be, when a hinder might uh, be a, a, a document that obstructs their ability to do so. And so, for example, some political scientists say, well, even it didn't matter who was in, in the government, it didn't matter what is the coalition, even until today, we don't have a constitution. Why? Because those people who get, once they get in power, they don't want to lose this power. They want, don't, don't want to uh, be obligated or interfered with. So, in, uh, so one of the examples is giving Nachem uh, Begin, which was a uh, uh, position in 1950 to 1948, he was a small party, the Khalil party. He was. Yes, sorry. Just a little bit of background, I'm not sure who he was. Okay, it's not really important. What well, was important for just for this case, but he was a real uh, believe he was a liberal. He really believed in the Constitution. He was really against the, country, the, the, the main party. Uh, because he said that the Constitution is important. But 30, 36 years later, how much? Uh, uh, in 1977, he came to power, but he didn't adopt the Constitution. 
And political scientists will say, well, the reason is because the Constitution binds government. And when, when he was in a position, he, want, he wanted the government to be bind, binded. When he was in power, he didn't want to. <laughs> um, but it's not just it's not just him. If you look at every other combination of political system, whether it's with, with religious parties, without, more leftist, more rightist, Israel still did not uh, adopt a constitution. Uh, another reason was that said, well, maybe and said, maybe we don't need, and I think it goes to your remark about the legality of uh, things. Uh, said, people said, well, why don't we need to have? Why do we need to have a constitution? Laws are binding enough. If there is something with the law book, it's binding. We don't need a higher law or a stronger law, it's strong enough. Uh, and actually, if we have a stronger law, it might mean that the regular law are weaker or not that important. No, we need to respect our laws regardless. There are no levels of law. There's only one kind of law, one law to the state. Uh, another reason, and this is maybe a caused by the, the fact that today the division between religion and religious and non-religious Jews is so strong, we sometimes imply that this was the same case uh, or the same, the only way to look at things in the 1940s. And that the religious Jews, especially the religious parties, did not want to have a constitution. They were, I think, maybe the only party that did not want to have a constitution uh, back then. And one, uh, and the reason was they said, well, the law should be the government, governance of the Jewish law, the values for the Torah, not a uh, 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 law, a secular law. So they were against that. Uh, regarding that, I should say another, mention another thing. And it's also maybe connected to culture and identity. Even today, and always, there were laws, secular laws, that were uh, with disagreement with religious laws. If there are you know, traffic laws, if they, you cannot say I was speeding in the highway because uh, there was Sabbath was uh, entering. Can you, can you say, well, it's my right to speed in the highway because of Sabbath? No. So always we have re uh, religion, uh, secular laws that actually are stronger than religious laws. So why, what is the problem with the Constitution? <coughs> we already have those, those conflicts. And this is a bit about something that I said in the beginning, that the Constitution symbolizes the values of society. So it's not about the practical problem, it's not a practical problem of having religious a party of having a constitution. It's more a symbolic uh, question. It's about stating out loud, saying out loud that we have uh, a higher secular law than the Torah. It's not about the reality which already the secular laws are more stronger. Um, another thing I want to say that even within uh, uh, religious groups or religious party, there is a big variance on how to uh, deal with the constitution. Some say no, we should not have a constitution of any 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 means. Some say, well, maybe let's see the documents. Let's see first what what are the ideas presented in the document, in the, in the, in this document, to then decide whether it fits the law or not. Some say actually it may be even beneficial, you go to strength, it strengthens uh, religious law. So there is a very big variation uh, between, with uh, the religious group. But as I said, one of the political cultures in Israel is the 
idea not to decide, the decision not to decide. So it's better not to decide upon uh, anything that might be uh, controversial. Any questions? Yes. Um, can you elaborate a little bit about uh, David and Rose, his personal view about this? Because I know he's actually uh, the head of you know, the opposition side. Like he doesn't agree to have a have a constitution. Um, and um, and at the end, I mean, like in the end, before he died, he actually personally he actually regretted of not having a constitution. So. Uh, I just want to understand like, why. Well, first, I must admit that I'm not an expert on Ben Gurion. I think Paul might be more uh, suitable to answer this question. But I, I think that even of that, Ben Gurion was the leader of the uh, biggest party at uh, 1948, it was not clear that he did indeed or did not want to. Uh, of the Constitution. There is a, they have remarks and actions, actually, more than remarks, that, said, that imply that they did, he didn't want a Constitution. He formed two committees, actually, to draft a Constitution. A Constitution. So he actually even started with the process of writing down the Constitution. Um, politically, if you look at statements before the elections and after the election, I think he all also uh, desired a constitution, um, but what exactly he believes, I don't know. Maybe Paul, you have a yeah. I'll, I want to add something. Um, I want to add a few remarks that, that about the Ben Gurion question. Um, the uh, I think in the process of discussing the constitution, uh, he realized that uh, things are not right yet. And that's what you mentioned before when you said that um, um, not, there were two major, two major claims that he, that he said, that he mentioned. One was that um, in order to have a constitution, the, the, there should be a higher level of maturity of governance and polity. And he mentioned the fact that Jews are still coming in the country and the country is still in the, in the process of being shaped and that if we, a constitution, um, if the constitution will be defined in an earlier, in an earlier stage, earlier, there, earlier than the society evolves, it will actually, uh, um, it will be like um, uh, demanding, it, it will be, it, the, the, the people that will join Israeli society later on will be bind by, they will meet, they will not be, part and parcel of the creation of the, the rules of the game. He actually says that explicitly. It's this, these are things he mentions uh, in minutes from meetings that took place. Uh, and, it's, and it's all part of the bigger message that Ben-Gurion has during the first decade that he always, remember the, the lecture, my lecture yesterday, that it's not time to lean back yet. Things are still in the process of being made. So. Uh, part of the respect that he had that things are in the process of being made was his un the understanding that he, he, he had for his own limitations of imposing his worldview and his ideas of how things should be done to a society that is still being uh, in the process of being made. Uh, as, of, as for your remark, I think uh, what he, what he I, I don't think he regrets it in his last days, I think what he criticizes a lot, not only in his last days, but throughout all the years, he does not like the, the, the government system in Israel. He wants to change the, elect the elections, the, ele the election system. I don't, how do you call it, Chitat the, the, the governance system. Ben-Gurion disliked the governance system. Uh, you know, there are many ways in democracy, there are many ways to uh, go about democracy. The governments could be shaped in different ways. We have the American presidential uh, model, and there is the British, who have a, a lot of that they give a lot of way to the regional aspects. And Ben Gurion was uncomfortable with the proportional 
democratic governance that Israel had then and still has today. And the reason he was uncomfortable with that is that he said that it's very hard to govern in this system because it's too diverse. It gives too much strength to the diversity of society. And as a prime minister, he felt it on his own. He felt it personally. So his main criticism as, uh, as a politician was that this is a system that is really hard to, to deal with. I, uh, and, and perhaps if there would be a constitution, that could have been changed earlier along the way. Anyhow, sorry to interrupt here, but this is a, an inter problem, the interesting aspect here is the fact that in spite of him not being happy with the system, it did not change. So in spite of him being the admired founding father of the nation, of the state, uh, the admiration and the respect that he had did not give him, did not gain him the political majority to change the system. He continued to complain about the system to, till his last day, but well, he was not able to change it. Jewish thing is about which is you also hard to complain. Yeah, but, like. but but it's also a very Israeli thing that uh, the limitations of power, the fact that this was a democracy, and even the strongest. I would say the most admired person uh, did not have the, the, he could not enforce his will over others. He needed to receive a democratic vote for that, and he didn't. That's uh, an interesting aspect that has to do with Israel's political culture. Yeah, but this compromise. Yes. yes. The people continue to uh, shape our political system. The fact that we always need to compromise, we cannot mandate. Politicians cannot mandate a single view, and this is for those who lead. Sometimes it's a problem because they want uh, more authority, more power, more uh, power to rule or to decide. Uh, I'm just thinking maybe it's a follow-up of the mentioned that I actually think it, in a way, did have the practical political power. He could form a coalition without the religious parties, the Jews want to. Uh, the same, you could say, uh, to other eras in Israel, that there are sometimes uh, options to have a secular, non-religious coalition, but they don't have it. Um, or even when they did uh, make a coalition, if I think about the last, uh, coalition, which was secular, they still did not write a constitution. What? Bennett. Yeah, Bennett was actually, yeah, he's a religious. So many are wrong with that. But, um, so, I think that um, this compromise is something that shakes uh, Israeli politics, and yeah, Ben Gurion and others might not be happy with that. But it's part of our culture. Um, what I would like to start uh, end and talk, maybe start bringing it up to today briefly, because it's very complicated to think about all the developments that happened in the uh, last 60 years, uh, um, and that. Uh, but start to think why we, stop, we still don't have a constitution. And what does it say about Israeli society? So first of all, from a purely legal perspective, if you want to ask lawyers, for example, you will say, yeah, Israel does not have a constitution, but it, it has something very similar, which is called basic laws. Basic laws actually are more or less the same thing as the Constitution. So if we start, what is the Constitution? The legal document describes the state's political procedure. So the basic law describes the political procedure. They say what, how many parliament members. They say for how many years, uh, every how many years there is an election. Where is the capital? Uh, where is the Knesset, the parliament? how judges are elected, and so forth. It says we have those political procedure, we have in the basic law. The legal document that guarantees citizens' rights and obligations, 
Yes, we have that. It says what uh, the basic plot says. What are the rights? What are the obligations? Uh, and it's stronger laws than regular laws. Yes, basic laws are stronger. Not all of them, but uh, in to change a law in Israel, I'm going to try to put it very simply the, the, the procedure in Israel, in the parliament, you need a regular majority. Like 50% plus one vote. So 50, less than 51%. You need a bit more than a majority. Half of the parliament member, half of the Knesset, should vote for something, more than half of the Knesset should vote for something, a law passes. But a basic law, or six, some, sometimes a section of the basic law, sometimes the full law, need a stronger majority, uh, and what's called absolute majority. Sometimes it's uh, two thirds, but sometimes it's about 60, uh, no, sometimes about 80 parliament members. So they need a strong, it's, it's actually very hard to change the basic law. Because as I told, we talked about before, in Israel there is a system that needs a coalition, different groups to come together to, 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 to make a compromise or to, 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 make the, to come to a situation where have an absolute majority uh, decides on something, it's very difficult. So actually the basic rules are, uh, do not change easily. What might be missing, and there, and there, this is one of the reasons a lot there is sometimes uh, debates within the Israeli society that people say yes, we want the constitution, is uh, more on the normative side. On the fact that uh, we, would, Israelis, would say, right, we would like a document that presents our presents our values, our democratic values, our modern modern values. Uh, that it will be heard, it will be, it will be symbolically uh, important. So it's more symbolically than rather than just legally, because legal, legally people have this protection, those protections. But symbolically, some people will say yes, we are still uh, behind. So again, why do we talk about the institution today? We talked about the old that we have it, but there are the same. Uh, first, many of the reasons we talked about well, the cultural, the reasons that we need to compromise, we, we decide not to decide, whether it's philosophical, the fact that it uh, uh, hinders the, 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 um, the political authority of the leader, that it's sometimes it's just uh, empty words. That even the political reasons uh, of not writing a constitution are still valid today. So we still need to have compromises between different parties or different groups. We still need to um, we have the divisions between religious and non-religious religious Jews. We still have the same uh, problems. We can even say we have maybe less about the economic situation, more pressing issues to deal with. And uh, it's not maybe it's still not the right time to write this constitution. But there are big changes in the political culture. As I said, the political culture is. In, in, uh, is in effect, a uh, combination of personal history and collective history, and both change. So people who live today are di a different history, those people, personal history and collective history than people who lived in 1950. So there are changes, and so some things changes for the good, some things changes for the bad, but uh, so there are less and less the, the idea that we should have a uh, compromise between the group is becoming less and less uh, important for the different groups. Uh, just as I said about, uh, about the last elections, both of these parties, uh, the, uh, their, uh, their slogan was uh, us or them. Choose me or the other. 
And this is exactly the, the, the opposing view of let's find a way to uh, work together. Um, and because maybe we are becoming more cynical or uh, we sometimes we look at those reasons that I gave in the 50s and think about them as excuses. For example, the thing is, let's wait until uh, we're more mature or we have more Jews in Israel. Maybe it was it is just an excuse or uh, rather than the real reason behind. Yeah, uh, you're not happy with No, 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 no. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, so, um, and this is why some people argue today, yes, we need a constitution. We are the political, cultural, and uh, philosophical reasons that were important in the 50s but are no longer important today. Uh, so from a con contemporary perspective, it may be argued that the main reason for not writing a constitution is connected to the political or pragmatist reason. There isn't a constitution because the political uh, uh, every coalition needs the uh, religious party in order to form a uh, government, and they don't want the uh, they don't, don't want the constitution, and this is the reason we don't have a constitution. What I try to argue today is that it's I think it's uh, more, it's a bit simplistic to look at it only from the electoral point of view, how many, how many votes you have, and do we need the uh, religious parties or not. I think it is a factor, but I think there are the cultural elements of how we see ourselves as a society, how we combine those different groups, how we do not split, uh, uh, that are, we do shape the fact that we don't have a constitution. Any questions or we have to use them.